Sarah, can you talk about how you came to meet Robin in, in the first place? I've been working with Iraq War veterans who are involved in paper making and warrior writers workshops for a year, a little over a year. And then I thought, why don't we combine these two workshops and have all the events come together and just have a retreat for all of them. And I lived on Martha's Vineyard for seven years and I was living in Vermont at the time, but I had tons of friends and a friend who gave us 75 acres of land for everyone to come to. So we brought everybody and Robin was one of the vets that came and I just didn't stop filming her ever since. <laughs> Robin, what was your first notion of letting Sarah uh, film you? Sarah was making a film about combat paper, and I thought that I was going to be a small part of the big film. And then I got a call um, from Sarah, and the phone kind of, you know, she goes, Hey, honey. And I'm like, Hey, how you doing? She goes, um, By the way, I made a documentary about you. Can I use it? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I... I had to think about it because it's it's inviting people into my life and I realized that to do that would be to show people what happens to veterans when we get home and that's more important to me. And can you bring us up to date on, on what you've been doing uh, since the this film was made? Um, Let's see, eating a lot more because I'm not broke. I can afford groceries. <laughs> um, <laughs> I moved. I moved out to the country. Um, I got a lot of counseling. I still have PTSD problems, but I have the coping skills to deal with them. Um, I'm in a great relationship. I have two dogs that are great, and I still paint and I still write. I'm nearing the completion of a book of poems, essays, and short stories. Sarah, what were the, I mean, it, it sounds like you've had a long involvement um, uh, in this area. What were the, um, what were the challenges kind of bringing, you know, bringing a story out of this? I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to choose from uh, out of all this material. Robin was in this other film that I was working on for a couple of years, a rock, paper, scissors, and um, I just didn't know what to do with it. I just, Robin story I wanted to focus on the the VA aspect of what veterans were going through that 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 elephant that in the room that they were dealing with and the bureaucracy and just the fact that they had no life experience and here they were forced to you know prove that they had trauma and because it's um, it's a emotional trauma it's a psychological trauma it's much more difficult to prove and so a lot of what these vets were trying to tell me was that hey you know no one's paying attention to me and and that's the reason I wanted to make this film was to kind of you know paint a bigger picture um, to show what they were going through and and I never thought it would go this far <laughs> but um so I had Robin and this other cut that I had and I brought it out to LA and I showed it to this particular person who is now my producer uh, at a producing workshop and he said Robin it clearly stands out as her own story you should really you have two films here and so from there I started working on the other film and I didn't tell her because I didn't want her to freak out before I I made it before I knew what was happening with it and so when HBO finally picked it up I was like okay I guess I have some I can tell her now <laughs> Robin, from your own personal perspective, where is this country at in 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 facing the the issue of PTSD and treating vets the way they deserve to be treated? And what needs to happen to to make it right? Um, unfortunately, I think the country learned too late uh, really what PTSD was doing to our troops because the U.S. actually waited until the rate of troops committing suicide coming home was higher than that of those who were being killed in combat. I mean, I remember telling a military doctor while I was still in, hey, I'm thinking of committing suicide. And this is the man that said, I didn't even have PTSD. You know, and he fell asleep during one of our sessions. But luckily, I think with Vets supporting other vets. I think that we're just now, as a country, starting to move in the right direction, but um, the VA needs a lot more funding. The vet centers need a lot more funding, but thankfully, they finally, you know, after, what, nine years, took a first step. 
Sarah, have you given thought to how this film might be used in in a kind of public education campaign? I mean, the whole reason I wanted to make this film was to bring the the you know the a public the public closer to a veteran and through Robin just to personalize the experience to get people to understand what they're going through and and because um, I think there's a disconnect between um, the public and and veterans today and that's one of the biggest problems. Question right here. I'm actually on the board of directors for Iraq Veterans Against the War now and I speak at um, high schools and colleges um, from anything you know anything related to my military service um, you know relation into PTSD from combat or even from PTSD from military sexual trauma and um, I really actually like speaking to students they're very receptive question in the back just getting these projects and inviting civilians to participate in them really um, brings a, a, a focus a common goal together and I think just using Martha's Vineyard as sort of um, a, a microcosm for how commu communizing, or no, com <laughs> communalizing can work. Um, you know, just bringing, bringing veterans into a community is, was, it was, it created the best of so many people. Like so many people came out in droves to come support them. We had um, people coming out leading yoga and meditation and massages and um, people offering their homes and cooking for us. We had people bringing us like, mattresses and blankets. It was like, what can I do to help? And I think sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a mutual effort of you know, finding each other and, and really making it a collaborative effort. For me, during the filming of this and during being involved with warrior writers and with combat paper, one of the problems I had after I got home is I felt like no one understood me. I, I felt like every civilian had nothing in common with me. I couldn't talk to them. They would never understand what I was about. Or even if I told them something, they would think I was completely nuts. And I kept myself separated. You know, my friends were either vets or still in the military. And what I found through organizing, through being an activist, and through being an artist now, is I've been kind of introduced to these, um, you know, wonderful people that I'm so glad I could get used to again. Because I don't know if it was just, I, I really don't know what it was. Um, it's, the military itself is such a different um, community in itself. There's different, you know, language even that people have to understand. It's like a different culture. And I was reintroduced into, you know, <laughs> a normal culture. Uh, want to uh, thank all of you for coming and especially thanks uh, Robin for, uh, for driving down. And thank you, Sarah, for bringing us this film. Good luck at yeah. the Oscars. Yeah.